What's up guys? June 1st is right around the corner, which means the opening of gag grouper season in federal waters in the Gulf of Mexico. And if you are like me, then you have been counting down the days and you probably have taken off a week of work kind of like I did. So I wanted to make a quick video just to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to get you on some gag grouper this upcoming season. If you are new to the channel, my name is Nick and I do a bunch of fishing related content such as tips and tricks, gear reviews, and just overall adventure videos. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you do find any value in this video, make sure to give it a like. It would really help me out and I would super appreciate it. So this is gonna be a brief overview. I am by no means a grouper expert, but from having only caught my first gag grouper in December of 2019, I've learned quite a bit over the past year and a half and I wanted to share all of my triumphs and tribulations when it comes to catching gag grouper. That way you guys are prepared for this upcoming season. You can spend less time wondering how to catch them and more time actually catching them. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now one of the most difficult parts about catching gag grouper is actually finding them and I don't mean finding out where they're located because it's no secret that gags really like structure whether it is a reef, a wreck, a artificial cube or any type of structure such as ledges, natural live bottom. However, finding spots that actually have those pieces of structure is what is the actual hard part. But I'm actually gonna give you three ways where you can find your own spots. So, number one, if you Google FWC reef locator, you are going to be able to find all of the public reefs that the FWC has posted in the state of Florida. And this can be a really good way for you to just find some public numbers and not really have to worry too much about finding your own spots. Now, because they are public, a lot of other people probably have access to these spots and there might be other people fishing them. However, don't be discouraged because I will say that some of the biggest gags that we have caught have actually been on some of these public numbers. So I'll leave a link down in the description below so you guys can have full access to that. They actually have an interactive map, an Excel spreadsheet, and a PDF that you can download so you have full access to all of the FWC artificial reefs in Florida. Now, the number two way that you can find spots is actually by purchasing a top spot map. These can be found in pretty much any local bait and tackle store or marina, and it actually has a lot of good spots on them. Now, most of these spots, again, are potentially public numbers because anyone can purchase these maps. However, it does give you a good baseline of where there is some structure and also some spots that you won't be able to find on the FWC's public reef locator. And as I was saying with the public reef locator, don't be discouraged if there are other people on these spots because they are semi-public because some of the places that we have found on these spots actually have really good bottom all around them. So another good way to find spots is actually my third way, and that's just finding your own spots. Some of the best spots that you are going to be able to find are just the ones that you stumble upon, such as going to a public number or going to some of these top spot locations and just doing some exploration of yourself. If you have a really relaxing, nice day, it's sometimes nice to just actually explore. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll actually tell you a tip to where you can find spots and catch fish at the same time. So make sure you stick around for that. Don't be afraid to go out and spend a day exploring, especially if you're having a tough day. Sometimes it's just nice to go around relax, enjoy the water, and actually look at your bottom machine while you're moving around so you can find some spots. And I guarantee eventually you will stumble upon a nice piece of structure or mark some fish on some live bottom and end up catching some fish. And along with finding your own spots, don't be afraid to just ask for some help. There's a lot of public Facebook groups that are more than willing to help you out. And also your local bait and tackle store marinas are typically pretty good about pointing you in the right direction. Now, don't ask people for their numbers because that's just kind of common fishing etiquette. And if you just ask some general areas and some general locations of where to catch some fish, people will typically throw you a bone. And we've actually found and stumbled across some good spots of just people giving us some general locations and kind of just going out and exploring ourselves. So don't be afraid to ask. Now I'd love to hear from you guys if you have any better ways of finding spots for grouper or if you have come across some spots in an unusual way. Leave those down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys and it would be awesome just to see how you guys actually find your spots when you're out there fishing. Now moving on to tackle, it is no secret that gags are one of the most powerful fish that are in the sea. 
Groupers in general are just really strong and so if you want to have a really good chance at catching grouper, I would strongly suggest beefing up your tackle, making sure you bring some heavy gear that way you can pull those grouper right off the bottom and out of the structure that they love to hide in. Now for general grouper fishing, you can pretty much get away with anywhere from 50 to 65 pound braid attached to a monofilament shock leader anywhere from about six to eight feet with an FG knot. That's typically how I like to set up my bottom fishing rigs. I actually have a rig here in front of me. It is a pen spin fisher 8000 it's actually a spinning setup i have 85 pound braid on it attached to anywhere from 60 to 100 pound liter and then i have a five ounce lead on it normally your typical bottom fishing setup is going to be a conventional rod and reel but you can really do either or if you're going to buy your first bottom fishing setup i'll leave some links down below that way you guys can see what i would recommend as your first setup and if you were gonna be bottom fishing, I would probably recommend getting a conventional rod and reel for your first bottom fishing setup. Now, as far as line goes, you can pretty much get away with the same line and rigs as you would on a spinning setup compared to a conventional setup. But as far as line goes, I have anywhere from 50 to 80 pound braid attached to a monofilament shock leader via an FG knot. And then from there, I will actually set up my different rigs. Now I'll leave a link down in the description below for the three types of rigs that we use. I'll also leave it up there for you guys if you wanna click that card and it will go over the three grouper rigs that we use when fishing for gags. Now as far as a reel goes, like I said, conventional or spinning, as long as you can get anywhere from two to 300 yards of braided line on there, 60 to 80 pounds, you can't go wrong. You wanna make sure though that, depending upon the size reel that you get, you have enough drag on there to really lock it down. With Grouper, you're gonna be fishing drag locked down, and with my pen spin fisher, I think it gets anywhere from, you know, 30 to 40 pounds of drag on it when you lock it all the way down. And the pen squalls that we use probably get around 20 to 25 pounds of drag. So make sure you have a very good, strong drag system on your reels, along with a very stout rod. The rod I have with the spin fisher is rated for anywhere from 50 to 100 pound braid. And really, that's what you want when it comes to bottom fishing for those groupers and snappers and things like that. If you have any questions about gear, leave those questions down in the comments below. I'll make sure to answer those. And I'll also leave you our full gear setups down in the description so you can check those out if you have any questions on what we use. Okay, let's move on to bait. As far as bait goes, a live pinfish is gonna be my number one recommendation for grouper. We actually set out bait traps for pinfish and get anywhere from 30 to 50 pinfish each trip we go out and some of the big pinfish have caught us some really nice fish. If I had to choose one bait, it would probably be a live pinfish on the bottom. However, grouper are a very aggressive species and they will pretty much eat any type of live bait that you can catch. Pig fish, squirrel fish, thread fins, pilchards, really anything that you can put on a hook on the bottom, grouper are going to eat. However, you can't really beat a live pinfish. If you can find a pinfish that is palm size or bigger, you're gonna be able to catch some really big grouper. And I will say, even some of the smaller grouper will attack a big pinfish, so just be ready for that. As far as cut bait goes, uh, we've actually had some pretty good luck with cut pinfish as well. Also thread fin, um, pogies, things like that. Really any type of frozen bait you can get from a bait shop and catch grouper. If you are going to be using cut bait though, I highly recommend cutting off the tail. And I also like to cut right behind the gill to where you have a nice rectangular piece of bait. The reason why this is important is because if you leave the tail on, it typically will spin the bait on the way down to the bottom, which can really tangle you up. And if your bait is tangled at the bottom, it's gonna not look that appealing to grouper or any other fish for that matter. And also, if you cut off the head, a lot of times you can use that along with the tail as chum. And also it leaves a nice scent trail from the gills forward. So it'll actually really attract the grouper. And lastly, don't think that groupers won't bite on artificials because I have had plenty of groupers attack vertical jigs and bucktail jigs. So if you 
run out of live bait or don't have access to live bait where you are, buy a nice bucktail jig and get a little curly tail trailer behind it and you will be able to catch grouper off the bottom uh, along with their vertical jigs. Uh, groupers are very aggressive. They can be caught on anything from live to cut to artificial bait. If they are hungry, they're gonna eat whatever you put in front of them. Okay, lastly is the tactics. Now there's multiple ways that you guys can catch grouper. One of the most exciting ways is just anchoring up on a piece of structure, dropping your bait down to the bottom and waiting for the thump. Groupers are suction feeders. So what that means is instead of biting on the fish, what they do is if this is your bait fish, they open their mouth and suck in the water along with the bait around them. So whenever you have your bait down on the bottom, you'll know it's a grouper by the distinct thump that that bait will get. You might feel a few different taps while your bait is on the bottom. Typically that's some smaller fish, uh, maybe even some snapper, but when a grouper comes to eat, you'll feel that thump. That's them vacuuming that bait in. And once you feel that thump, you reel, that circle hook's gonna get hooked in the corner of his mouth and you're gonna feel that rod bend as that grouper tries to go back to that structure that he was hiding in. Once you have that grouper hooked, pull your rod tip up. You don't wanna yank it, just pull it up because you wanna get him off the bottom. And if you're using conventional tackle, just reel to get him off the bottom. If you're using spinning tackle, try and keep that rod tip up to keep him off the bottom because as soon as a grouper knows he's hooked, he's gonna go try and get to the structure to break you off, go back into his hiding hole to where he can rock you up and let you not get him out of that hole. And then once you have him probably about 10 to 20 feet off the bottom, the fight's usually over at that point. They kind of give up and they will just let you bring them to the top. However, Sharks are notorious for going after grouper and fish that are, look like they're struggling on their way to the top. So don't be leisurely about it. Get them to the surface as soon as possible. You wanna make sure that if it is an undersized gag or if it's an undersized grouper in general, that you can get him up to the surface safely and release him. That way he's not just easy lunch for a shark. One of the most annoying and heartbreaking things for me is getting a nice grouper on the hook and then a shark just biting him off and the you know you had a really good grouper on and now the shark got to eat him instead of you that's heartbreaking now tactic number two is just drifting for grouper if you find a nice piece of live bottom you can definitely drift for grouper i would recommend however if you're drifting to try and keep that weight a little bit off the bottom because if you have your weight just dragging along the bottom it's going to get stuck and it is a pain in the butt to try and get your weight out of some of that structure you're either going to have to break off or you're going to have to have the captain or whoever's driving the boat drive around get on the opposite side of that structure and then pull it out and by that time your bait's probably gone or has probably been eaten or just dead at that point. So if you're gonna be drifting, try and pull that weight a little bit off the bottom so it doesn't get stuck and just let that bait kind of naturally move along the bottom and we have had some success while drifting. Okay, lastly, and one of the most exciting ways to catch grouper, and it's actually something I referenced before, trolling for them. Trolling for grouper can be very productive. Some of our first grouper that we ever caught that were keepers were actually caught on man's stretch 30s on some public numbers and we caught four or five keepers which we had never done before in one day and it was just really fun. It's exciting to see those rods get hit and then they just bend over. It's really an awesome time. All you do is just get a deep diving plug doesn't really matter the brand, they all work. As long as it gets anywhere from 30 to 40 feet deep, you want it close to the bottom. You just troll along around four to five miles an hour over the piece of structure, and the groupers are gonna see it, and they're gonna hit it. I'm gonna be doing a more comprehensive video when it comes to trolling specifically for grouper because it's just an absolute blast going out there and it's pretty relaxing. And at the same time, as you're trolling, you can actually troll over different spots around the area that you're originally fishing and stumble upon new spots. We've actually found some spots just by trolling that have been very successful for us. So it's one of those ways that you can do some exploration and fishing at the same time with the opportunity to catch some grouper. 
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If so, make sure to give it a like. If there's anything that I missed or anything that you would like me to expound upon, make sure to leave those comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer those for you. And I do look at all my comments, so I'd love to hear from you guys. If you have any particular tips that you wanna share, then definitely please do. And like I said, grouper season starts June 1st, so I hope you guys are able to get out and catch some grouper this season. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there. I'll leave a couple different grouper videos right there for you guys. And until the next video, I hope you're able to get out on the water and catch some gags.